It is perhaps a sad fact of life that none of us can live for particularly long without our technology by our sides, even when out and about on our motorcycles. So it's little wonder that many riders choose to turn their bikes into giant petrol-powered mobile phone chargers by using one of these. But putting my slightly ironic sentiment to one side, all of this tech does definitely have its benefits. It enables us to navigate to anywhere in the world, to stay in touch with each other, and to capture our rides in stunning 4K. And if the worst was to come to the worst, it might just save your life too. So it is important stuff. The only downside to all of this gadgetry is that it does need to be constantly topped up with power, especially if you're out and about on longer trips. And that's where USBs come into the equation. This is what I've been currently using on my Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. It cost about 13 quid. And apart from the slightly awkward design for mounting, it's done a pretty good job so far. But what would happen if one was to try to up their USB game, to go all premium and spend almost £50 on a custom-made system, especially for the Royal Enfield Interceptor and Continental GT? Well, in this episode, we're going to find out. So here it is. This is the custom bracket and pre-wired dual USB unit from Hitchcock's Motorcycles here in the UK. And at around £47.40 before shipping, I've got to tell you that expectations have been set pretty high. And I've got to say that upon getting my hands on it and uh, actually seeing what you get in the kit, that initial sticker shock started to wear off slightly. It did start to make sense pretty quickly. Firstly, we've got this really well-made aluminium bracket. Now, I know it's not the most complex design in the world, but it is well machined. It's well painted. It's well thought out. It's actually the main reason why I went with this system, because it's made to mount on the bike's 41mm forks. And the benefit of that is it gets all of this bulk and nasty cables away from the handlebars when you're not using it. I like to keep my handlebars nice and clean. Your investment also goes into this custom made cable. And again, this is made with care, just the right length. It's got the correct two pin plug ready to clip effortlessly into the accessory port inside your headlight. I'm also impressed with the choice of the USB unit itself. It seems to be of good quality with a metal body. Of course, it's good to see two USB ports so I can plug in more than one device. And it's got a decent rain cap as well. Now you can either connect this directly to the bike via the ready-made plug, or if you want to future-proof your install and possibly connect more accessories down the line, you can connect it via this one to two splitter that was actually very kindly sent to me by a guy called Paul, who's a viewer of the channel. And thanks to Paul's creation, I can now go ahead and connect my Hitchcock's USB on one side. And as long as I keep within the 10 amp limit on the circuit, I can then use the second outlet for something like heated grips. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to get yourself one of these connectors from Paul. Now, thankfully, the aluminium bracket on the Hitchcock's USB kit comes in two parts, which enables you to mount it to the bike without having to drop it down through the stanchion. So it's really easy to get it installed. You just bring the two pieces together and use the two supplied bolts to secure them to the fork. Once you're happy with the positioning, you can go ahead and thread the cable through the bracket and position the main USB unit. This is secured in place with a plastic threaded ring. Next up, find a route for the cable to enter the headlight via the hole in the back of the unit. Now you'll simply have to remove the glass from the front of the headlight and go ahead and connect it to the accessory plug. As you can see, I'm using the splitter, so I'm ready for future mods down the line. Once done, reinstall the glass via the two screws on the side of the bucket and you're good to go. 
just make sure that you can turn the bars through the full range of steering motion without any binding. I had to slightly reposition my clutch cable just to make a bit more space, but it is, apart from that, a very straightforward install. Now, because it uses the switched accessory plug, it shouldn't be drawing any power from the bike when it's turned off. And that is a really important thing to look out for on a USB. Never connect them directly to the battery because they do constantly draw power and you'll find your bike flat in a few days. You should only see the blue power light when you have the bike's ignition turned on. The only downside that I can see to this design is in fact the orientation of the USB plugs themselves. Because they're pointing straight up at the sky, it does make the whole unit a little bit of a rain catcher, definitely much more so than if they were slightly more horizontally orientated on a set of handlebars, for example. So with that in mind, you will need to make sure that you use that rubber rain cap if there's a chance of a downpour. And with all USB systems, probably best not to use them in the rain anyway. Apart from that, it does look like a very well-made piece. You've got a custom cable, you've got a nice bracket, and you've got a high-quality USB unit. So is it worth 50 quid? Well, that really is down to you and what you want and what you're prepared to do. If you want to go ahead and fabricate your own brackets, paint it all up, procure all the individual bits and pieces, make your own cables, sure, you could probably do it for cheaper. But what you're paying for is the cost of convenience. And with that in mind, it is a beautiful plug and play solution. Out of the box, it just works. It's very high quality. So with that in mind, from me, it definitely gets the thumbs up. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next one, ride safe.